Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the Word for Today broadcast, and we just bless God. Start a little late. I try to play a song, but it, for some reason, wouldn't play. Hallelujah. But anyway, praise the Lord. We're using a new console here, so we're going to work out the kinks as we go along, so it's no big deal, really. Praise God. And so we just bless God for this day and thank Him for everything that He is doing. And we just want to give Him the glory, the honor, and the praise today. He is the King of glory. Father, we thank You today for Your Word. We thank You for Your holiness. We thank You for Your righteousness, O God, that You have finished the work through Your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You have completed what You set forth to do, Lord. And now it is being perfected the life of your Son perfected in your people today, Lord. We bless you. We thank you. We ask you, Lord, Father God, to give us understanding by the Holy Ghost in our hearts of the importance of your word, the importance of the call upon our life, O oh God, that you have called us unto yourself to be vessels of, filled with your fire, filled with your compassion, filled with your humility, O Lord, and all the fruit of the Spirit. As we go forth each day, Lord, as you show us exactly each specific member, part of the body of Christ, our call, that we would be obedient to you, Lord, is our prayer. That your name would be exalted, O God, in the earth. And through our lives, Lord, that Jesus would be manifest to a lost and dying world, Lord. To stand for the truth of your word. In the midst of the chaos and the suffering of this world, Lord. That your people would be seen as pillars of truth. Pillars of righteousness. Pillars of your awesome love and mercy and justice we thank you father and crush the devil serpent down under our feet in jesus name amen hallelujah all oh, praise god today now <clears throat> today's message is called the fact that jesus wants us to follow him follow me he says Come and see. Now, many of you, you're walking with the Lord. Maybe you've been walking with the Lord for 10 years or a year or two years or 20 years or 25 years or 30 years. And the Lord is saying to us, and he said to us, follow me. Okay. He is who we need to follow, not a church organization over here, whether it's the Catholics or the Baptists, and not a group of people over here, a prophetic movement, if you will. But Jesus says to us, follow me. Okay? In Luke chapter 5, it says here, <clears throat> in verse 27, And after these things he went forth, talking about Jesus Christ, and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. He said unto him, follow me. Now, isn't that amazing? That's what he said unto him. Follow me. And so here's the Lord calling to Levi, to Matthew, follow me. He's the richest guy in town now. He's the tax collector. And what does it say? And he left all, rose up, and followed him. Okay? He left all, rose up, and followed him. And then it says, And Levi made him a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against the disciples, saying, Why do ye eat 
and drink with publicans and sinners. And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So we see this beautiful story here. And the principle is Christ came to save sinners, okay? Which all of us were in that body of humanity who's fallen from grace. He came to save us. We've answered the call. And now we're learning how to allow the Holy Spirit to have full reign in our life by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is the element, it's the principle that will put down the flesh man where we want to do what we want to do. Or do it like the world says to do it. Or do it like the Catholics say. Or the Baptists say. And as long as you do it like they say to do it, everything's hunky-dory. you got to be like the United Pentecostal Holiness Church. Or the Church of God in Christ. Or you got to be like the Church of Christ. Or you got to be like this church or that church or whatever, whatever kind of group of people you're with. But no, all of that is man's way of doing things. They go to a certain level and they stop. Where Christ says, follow me. See, Jesus Christ, he fills the universe in all of its parts. Okay. He, heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. Today, he's walking this earth through you and I, those who are truly born anew and filled with the Spirit of God. I know when Sharon and I, when we go to town, we always pray, Lord, give us a divine appointment today. Lord, open up a door of ministry to this person or that, whoever you want us to talk to today. And so we're always prayed up. We try to be always prayed up and, and let the Lord use us because he wants to use us at the store. He wants to use us while we're driving to town if somebody's broke down or whatever might happen in this particular day. We want to be used of God as his servants. <clears throat> now, today I'm going to read this out of this book, Bruco. I've told you about this book and it's the story of Bruce Olson. And Bruce Olson is a saint that He's still alive today, working down in South America. And God called him to follow him. Okay? Maybe, I don't know where you're at today. We know we, we know a few people who've listened to the broadcast. We don't know a whole lot. But that's okay. It's how the Lord orders it. But wherever you are, see, Jesus wants to use you where you are and then he wants to use you in another place okay you don't know what's going to happen the rest of this day you don't know what's we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow okay none of us but we want to be following the lord today and doing what the lord says today well bruce olson I, i've been reading the book again bruco and he was about 14 15 years old, and he was a Lutheran in the Lutheran church. This is like in the, in the late 50s, middle to late 50s, 1950s, in Minnesota, Minneapolis. And his family, they're, they're, they're Lutherans. They're strict Lutherans. He had just done his confirmation, and a year or so before this time, I think he was 16, he, he said, and he went up into his room and he was he was a lingu he was going to go to college to be a linguist to get a phd in languages okay and be a professor this is what he was shooting for but he wanted to know god he was just asking god you know if this is real what's going on you know he wanted the lord he was reading the bible i think he said he was reading the gospel of john just reading it and he started to talk to god because he was in church but he, it was just, it was the same thing every week, you see. And it's just, it, there was nothing there. And, he, and so God, what it was, God put a call upon his life. God began to woo him, putting this dissatisfaction, if you will, in his mind and heart about what he was in. So he began to call out to God and the Lord came 
and saved him. He said his testimony is he he began to feel a warmth inside and just a, a real presence of God. And the Lord just came into his bedroom and just and really just started communicating to him and he was saved. So he started sharing it with his friends, sharing it with the pastor. But see, the religious system, they were like, no, this ain't working. You were confirmed. We, we're the ones that, you know, you already have Jesus. You, you were already baptized. You were baptized as a baby. All these different things they were telling him. But he couldn't stop sharing the truth of his revelation that he received from God and the, the empowerment and the, the friendship and the voice of the Lord that was speaking to him, okay? Because he was saved now, just a teenager. But it, but it was confusing to him because religion was pushing him aside, was saying, no, that's not the way. That's not the way. See? And his own father, his father was a banker, and his own father was just like, you know, he called him a holy roller. He said, well, what's this holy roller going to tell us today? But he, one of his friends from school, he went to another church than the Lutheran church. So he invited Bruce over because he got saved. He got born again. His friend did. They were just teenagers. So he went to that guy's church and he started going there. He'd go to the Lutheran church early in the morning on Sunday. Then he'd go to that other church because over there he was getting fed. So he was getting fed the word. But even there, there was still this, in that in that other church, there was still this religion this control this this man-made system of something anything okay and his dad said what's what's the holy rollers message today for all of us sinners you know his dad was mocking him mocking his life his own father and and the whole established religion system religious system mocking bruce olson just a kid but then this missionary came to that church he used to go to, and, and it was an independent church. And so he felt the call of the Lord to go into missions. And he was going to go into missions. So I'm going to read them. I'm going to pick it up here. And uh, this is from the book Brooklyn. Now listen, if you're, if you're being called of God today, and you are being called of God, you say, John, how do you know I'm being called of God? Because God's calling all of his people. What's he calling us to do? To follow him today to be in the same way with him that's what that word follow means when jesus told matthew follow me see jesus said follow me it means to be in the same way with jesus so there's a lot there you could talk for years about the way jesus walked he wants us to be in the same way that he walked now let me pick this story up right here because this is going to bless you just listen to this now. He said, Through it all, my compassion for the people of South America, he had heard this missionary, continued to grow. What had been a lukewarm commitment became a driving urge. Finally, one evening, I decided that I would wait until I finished school. Okay. I would visit South America now. Okay. No, he says, I decided that I wouldn't wait until I finished school. I would visit South America now. Maybe I would find peace in my heart when I got there. I began the process of applying to a well-known mission board in Venezuela. It was a tedious, slow process, and I felt school chafing against me. Once I had made the decision to leave the United States, it didn't make sense to me to keep going to school. Okay, he's in college now, just 18, 19 years old. And the thought of going to Venezuela has was becoming more and more exciting. Okay, He says, I had an inner peace about it too. I knew that, irrational as it seemed, I was doing the right thing. I was obeying God. Then one day I received my long-awaited reply from the mission board. With great excitement, I opened the envelope. I found a single sheet. So he's applying to the mission board, okay? 
He, he's apply, He's going through all the channels of the, quote, church. All right, now listen to this. It said, Dear Mr. Olson, we are sorry to inform you that we cannot accept you at this time for missionary service. You understand, I trust that, end quote. I didn't finish the letter. I couldn't. The words seem to have lost all their meaning, as though they were written in hieroglyphics. I stared at it. My mother came into the room and noticed something was wrong. What's the matter, Bruce? She asked, putting a hand up to my forehead, checking to see if I had a fever. I closed my eyes and breathed a deep sigh. It's nothing, Mom, I said. Just some bad news. She looked questioningly at me, but I couldn't explain. Not then, anyway. I turned and left the room. Later, when I was over the original shock, I felt better. Well, at least that's over and done with, I thought. I won't have to worry about God's wanting me in South America for a while, at least. See, God had called him to go to South America. He's saying, oh, I'm, I'm off the hook now. And after a few days, I felt relieved. And for a few days, I felt relieved. I enrolled in new classes at the University of Minnesota and really looked forward to studying. My dream of becoming a professor of languages returned. I could pick up where I had left off and forget South America like a nightmare is forgotten after waking. But many times as I studied in the library, I felt God nudging me. Bruce! I want you in South America. But Lord, I tried that. Don't you remember? I was turned down. Turned down by whom? Why, by the mission board, of course. It was as though God were smiling at me. Amused and tolerant. Bruce, I didn't turn you down. I want you in South America. Follow me. That's what he told Bruce. Follow me. God said, I haven't turned you down. I want you in South America. Follow me. Now, he's 19 years old, saints. And he said to God, this is ridiculous. God, this is ridiculous. How can I go down there without a mission board? You want me to go down there without anyone to take care of me? I mean, without protocol and all? Bruce, God says to him, Bruce, I'm in South America, too. <laughs> and then, slowly, unwillingly, I began to see what God had been trying to teach me. He hadn't called me, really, to be a missionary like Mr. Rayburn, this missionary he had listened to at the church. He had called me to himself to be like his son, Jesus Christ. You see? This is what the call is upon all of our life. Okay? And he wanted me to follow him to South America. Now. I knew my parents would never be able to accept it. Even the thought of going with a well-established mission board had upset them. To go all by myself, they would consider that impossible. So, he says, I went to Chicago on the train to get my passport and visa without telling my parents. I had only enough money for the round-trip train ticket. Nothing for food or a place to sleep. All the way there I prayed that God would take care of what I needed. I was hungry when I arrived in Chicago. I had about 30 cents in my pocket. I found my way out of the huge, bustling, echoing station and onto the sidewalk. I stopped for a moment to get my bearings. It was hot and windy. I glanced down and saw some green out of the corner of my eye. It looked like money. I picked it up and unfolded it. It was a $10 bill. Wow, thank you, God, I whispered. I looked around, expecting someone to claim it. No one was near. There was no way to find out who had dropped it. I could keep it. Now, saints, I'm going to stop right there. That's what I wanted to read to you. To show you, God says, follow me and what does God say? You follow me, and I will take care of you. Okay. Now I urge you to get a copy of this book, Bruco. Just type it in on on a search, 
and it's B-R-U-C-H-K-O, Bruco, okay? Get a copy of it, because it's a powerful story. I'm reading it right now again, and uh, there's so many lessons to be learned about obedience to the Lord, following the Lord, okay? I mean, he's 19 years old, and he flies down to Venezuela. It's like 1961, 62, okay? At 19, with no no backing from any mission board, okay? And this is a country, Venezuela at the time was, uh, the communists were trying to take over, and, and, and all this stuff was happening. There was a lot of stuff happening. But God called him to go find this tribe of Indians, Okay? To minister the love of Jesus to them. Because God saw what was happening to these people. And God wanted them to be ready. So he sent Bruce down there. And today Bruce still lives down there. With the same people. Okay. And I don't know if he moved back to America or not. I don't think he did. But he, I, I'm not real sure about that. So don't quote me on that. But the fact is. Is that he's doing what God's told him to do. He was obedient to God as a young man. Today. <clears throat> Saints, there's too many Christians making excuses for why they can't do what God wants them to do. Okay? They they find an excuse. Oh, that will be hard, Lord. Or I don't have the money to do that, Lord. Or this or that. Whatever the excuse might be. And God says, I'm not going to have none of that. I told you to do this. See? And that's what we need to do. We need to do what God tells us to do. And we're here today preaching this word to you. We come over here to share with you the truth of God's word. But it doesn't do you any good if you don't act on the word. If you don't agree with the truth of God's word. See? It's very important. Jesus said, follow me. Okay? Now, let's go to John chapter 1. And we're going to look at this right here in John 1. This is so powerful. I've been studying this and, and seeking the Lord. And I know He wants to share with you today this truth. Re-emphasize to you the truth of His awesome Word, His Holy Word. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word, it says. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning of what? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the word was God. And in the Greek it says, and God was the word, the logos. See, God is. Hallelujah. He knows everything. He sees everything. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him... In Him now, in Christ, in Jesus, in the Word, in Him was life. And the life was the light of men. So many people think they have life today. They have soul life. They're, they're able to drink water and, you know, talk and think and feel. They have a will, strong will. To go in the way they want to go. But see, when you come to Christ, he says, follow me. How do you do that? By surrender. By surrendering your will. You surrender your emotions, no matter how it feels. You surrender your reason, your way of thinking. See? And this is what Bruce had to do. He had to surrender all that to the Lord. Because the normal way is go with the mission board. See? Let me tell you something else about what happened to him down there. <clears throat> He went down there, and he, he finally got to visit some Indians. That's what he was going down there for, to minister to the Indians. And so this one guy took him down to an Indian village up in the mountains, and there was a mission, a group of missionaries already there. And you know what? They rejected him because he wasn't with a mission. He wasn't with a mission board. They rejected him. And then he met another missionary family. He started playing with one of their sons who was about the same age as he was. He was 18. Bruce was 19. And so they were becoming friends. And then all of a sudden his family told him, you can't 
talk to him anymore. You can't talk to Bruce anymore because he's not part of us. You see? And this is what the church does. They they, they put a, a divider in there. If you're not in, in our church, you, you know, if you don't get baptized in our church, you're not a Christian. They're liars. I'm telling you right now, in 2000, the year 2000, we we purchased a house from a church. They were going to bulldoze this house into the ground, and then somebody had a bright idea. Let's let's sell it. Let's see if we can get some money for it. See? And so we were able to get the house, and when we started to tear the house down, the Lord spoke into my spirit. He said, I'm going to tear down this church of today, this modern church of today, down to the very foundation, okay, which is Christ Jesus. We tore that whole house down, saints, I'm telling you, me and my wife, and we moved everything that we could, which was everything of the house except some of the, the rocks and stuff that we couldn't get, stuff that got destroyed. They told us, put it over there on the back of the property, so we did. But everything else we put in our little Toyota pickup and took to where we were living to build it up again. Everything, right down to the cinder blocks. And it got, I mean, and while we were working in there and God told me, we, we started inside the house in the biggest bedroom in the house and God spoke to me right there. He said, I'm going to expose all the filth and all the wickedness going on in my church. It's all going to come out into the light. Because all that's done in darkness will come into the light, the word says. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, since 2019 years ago, God has been exposing what's been going on in his, quote, church. People who say they are, quote, Christians. <coughs> Pardon me. They say they're Christians. They say they love Jesus, but they're cheating on their wives. They're homosexuals. They're child molesters. They're women abusers, men abusers. They're backbiters. They're liars. They're thieves. They're doing all this stuff in the church. But they say they love Jesus. But they're not really loving Jesus, and they're certainly not following Jesus. Jesus would never do any of those things. And then they make excuses for their sin, for their rebellion. And they try to hide it. But I'm telling you right now, God Almighty, Jehovah, is going to expose even more of what's been going on in the, quote, body of Christ, man's institution, what they're doing, okay? God is showing it out to be false, because that's what it is. It's built up by man. He's shaking it, shaking it, shaking it. It's all going to come crumbling to the ground. And the question today is, are we following Jesus? Are we following him? Are we in the same way with him? Hallelujah. We were talking about this yesterday and the day before. See, Jesus walked the crucified life. He said, follow me. That means to be in the same way with him. That's the crucified life. That means we deny ourselves. We take up our cross daily and we follow him. We, we go in the same way that he went. Jesus, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. And what does that mean? Because he was God in the flesh. What it means is the obedience that he learned, it was perfected in him by the trials he faced, by the temptations that he bore. I mean, the temptations were coming at him all the time, every day, from outside. Temptations. To do it himself. To make his life a little bit easier. To do it this way or that way. And Jesus always deferred to the Father. He always did what the Father said to do. He didn't do what man said to do. He didn't do what the religious crowd said to do. He didn't do what Peter told him to do. 
turn around, Lord. No, you can't go to the cross. No, Lord. Uh Uh-uh. So the church, they come out with this teaching. Well, Jesus went to the cross, so I don't have to go to the cross. But yet Jesus said, you got to take up your cross daily and follow me. Or you're not worthy to be my disciple. That's what Jesus Christ said. Follow me. Now listen to John again. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, John 1, 5. And, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. See, the darkness of the flesh man can't comprehend the light. It tries to use the light for its own fleshly advantage. See, this is called religion today. Religion in this world. But it can't comprehend the light. See? The light shineth in darkness. Okay? And the darkness comprehended it not. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. To bear witness of the light. That all men through him might believe. That all men through him, the light, the Lord Jesus might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That that was the true light, which light lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. He came unto his own humanity. God says in Isaiah, he made all the souls of men. He created them all. He came unto his own and his own received him not. He came unto his own nation and they received him not. But as many as received him... To them, have you received the Lord? To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believing on his name means into him, into his name. What does name mean? It means character, authority, okay, rule. Oh, praise God. We believe into his name, into his character. By what? By the Holy Ghost, by the shed blood of Christ, and by walking in the way with him, following him. (coughs) Verse 12 again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, like Bruce, when old Bruce Olson was, he, there was something about, he was just so empty. His, his life meant nothing. He just felt, God just had him feeling like, man, what is, what is life about? This is useless. I, I just feel, I mean, he's like, you know, 15, 16 years old. When you get to that age, man, and you want to know what the, what the meaning of life is, okay? And since he had been going to church since he was a baby, you know, and, and he was, he just began to talk to God. He believed God was real, but he didn't know him. But when he really was pouring his heart out to God, God revealed himself to him. And it's st- he's still revealing himself to Bruce Olson today. See, we never arrive and come to a place where we say, okay, I know all there is to know about God. No. Religion does that. But not in the true walk. You always are growing and expanding. And, and, and it's like Jesus Christ, the land of far distances. I mean, you come up to a place and you think, oh, wow, I've arrived. And then you find out in about 30 seconds, no, you haven't. <laughs> you, you see further. There's, there's a bigger horizon. The horizon's always way out there. See? Hallelujah. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In verse 14, there's two brackets there. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And then there's a bracket. And then it says, full of grace and truth. The word took on humanity. Hallelujah. See? God in the flesh. The word became flesh. Tabernacled among us. And then John says here, John bare witness of him, talking about John the Baptist, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of, and of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Verse 18, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. That's what John the Baptist told them. I'm not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? Are you Elijah? And he said, He saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. What prophet? The prophet that Moses said God would raise up like unto himself in Deuteronomy. It's recorded. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and saith, said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe la shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. Oh, hallelujah. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Oh, John saw Jesus coming unto him. He knew, oh, hallelujah, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Verse 35, again the next day, John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. Oh, they followed Jesus. They heard him speak. They followed Jesus. Follow me, Jesus said. They were following Jesus. Hallelujah. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto, him, unto them, What seek ye? What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say being interpreted, Master, 
Where dwellest thou? Where do you, where do you dwell? He saith unto them, Come and see. Come and see. Come see where I dwell. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Now, we, we're looking at this, we're reading this, we're thinking natural realm, right? Natural realm. No, 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 no. Think about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Think in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. One of the two which heard him speak, which heard John speak and followed him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Here's Philip. Jesus says, Follow me. Come. Be in the same way with me. Follow me. Now Philip was of, was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. <coughs> And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. See, God, God has seen us, saints. Wherever you are today, God saw you long time ago. Or maybe you're just now tuning in first time to hearing the message. God seeing you. God, God saw you yesterday sitting in your car. God saw you standing at the store. God saw you walking through the park. Jesus saw Nathaniel praying. See, Jesus can see everything in the spirit. He's Almighty God in the flesh. And he saw Nathaniel. Nathaniel and, he, and he said, This is a true Israelite in whom is no guile. He's truly seeking me. And when a person has a contrite and broken heart before the Lord, the Lord will reveal himself to that person. Because God loves the souls that he has made. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip caught thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Wow. How much does it take for us to, to make the confession, Lord, thou art God. Jesus, you are the mighty God. See, look at Nathanael. Jesus just told him that. I saw you under the fig tree before Philip even called you. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open." And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. <clears throat> you're going to see heaven open, Nathaniel. And you're going to see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And he says to Nathaniel, he says to Peter, he says to Andrew, he says to Philip, he says to John, he says to us today, all of his children throughout the earth, follow me, come and see. Come and see. Come and see the humility that I walked in. Come and see that that same humility must abide in you, he says to us. It must be 
us hearing his voice and the angels of God ascending and descending upon us as it happened with Christ. Because see, with Christ Jesus, Jesus said, as my father sent me, even so send I you. The question today is as well, are we following Jesus? Are we coming to Jesus to see what he wants to show us? Have we been born from above? When we say, yes, I have been born again, do we understand what that means? We are born from above. We have received his spirit into our spirit to give us a new spirit, man, to recreate, resurrect our spirit. And he's filled us with his Holy Spirit. And we walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. See, when we walk by the spirit, we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when the devil comes knocking and the devil uses the flesh and the world and his own wicked dominion demons. Okay? That's what the devil uses. But the, the worst enemy we have is our old nature, the old nature flesh, the carnal mind. And if we submit to that, then what happens? We're, we're walking in a false way. We're walking in sin. See? See? We're relying upon our own understanding. But if when we walk by the Spirit, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, capital S. We do not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Hallelujah. And then you, you have victory. You walk it in victory. And you think, praise God, I got the victory today. And the next day comes, oh, hallelujah, I got the victory. And then three or four days, five days, you got the victory. You're walking in victory, see? And what happens when you got the victory? You're walking in victory, see? Here's what happens a lot of times. And I think you're going to say amen to that. The guard lets down a little bit. No, you can't ever put your guard down, ever. What's the guard? It's the witness, the Holy Spirit witness in our heart. It's the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, seated at the Father's right hand, crowned in majesty and glory, hallelujah, crowned in glory, hallelujah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of the universe, risen from the dead, hallelujah, and his flesh and bone body seated at the right hand of the Father and the majesty on high. We're going to keep our focus on the Lord, see, he says he keeps those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed upon him. But, but when we have the victory, we have the victory, we have the victory, we have the victory. Okay? And, and what will happen is sometimes the guard will let down. The guard lets down a little bit. And when that happens, here comes the devil. And the first thing is the flesh, then the world, then the devil. And I'm telling you right now, the lust of this world is passing away. You don't want to pass away with the lust of this world, do you? You don't want to pass away with the lust and the idolatry of this world. No. All we need, saints, all we need is in Christ. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. Don't we know that Jesus, he never lacked any good thing. He had everything he needed in his walk down here on this earth. And I guarantee you, Sharon and I can testify to you, you will have everything that you need in this walk down here when you follow him. And you come and see, you'll have everything you need. You don't always have everything you want. And sometimes your your understanding of your need doesn't line up with God's understanding. Like what I was writing, reading there with Bruce, Bruce Olson. Okay. God said, I'm in South America too, Bruce. I'm, I'm, I want you to come now to South America. I'm not calling you to a mission board. I'm not calling you to be in a, quote, fellowship necessarily okay god says he says i'm calling you to myself i'm calling you to be available to me to go where i tell you to go and do what i tell you to do and say what i tell you to say because there's people where i'm sending you that i love and i want to, to show them the truth of my son and the love of my son and the sacrifice that he's accomplished for them 
And it turned out, you know, the Indians that he went to, the Motolonis, you, you read the story, and, and, and a lot of the things they were doing, I mean, it was like they were doing things that were very, very close, and, and, and the way they believed, they just didn't, didn't understand who it was. You see what I'm saying? But when Bruce came in and brought the gospel, then they understood. Then the light came on, so to speak. You see what I'm saying? And they understood. See, because God has put in man a desire. And the devil come in and try to rob that desire. See? The devil come in and said, hey, you can be like God. You can go this other way. You can do it yourself. No, you no, no, no. See? That's all false. And I'm telling you right now, God says, be in the way with me. Walk with me. Follow me. Come and see. See? See, I told you I would take care of you. I told you I would bring you to the other side. Hallelujah. I told you we were going to the other side. He said, let's go to the other side. They all got in the ship and the, air, the, the waves were crashing in. And Jesus was down in the ship sleeping on a pillow. Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus wasn't worried. He knew he was going to the other side. Didn't matter what the devil threw at him. But all that was allowed because he wanted to show the disciples. He wanted to show them, hey, there's no need to be afraid. Don't you know this world is convulsing right now? It's like a great big gigantic tidal wave of filth in the world. Degradation, fornication, all sorts of wickedness in this world. Wars, rumors of wars, all this stuff happening out in the world. We don't have to be swept away with all that, with fears and worries and doubts and discouragements and all that stuff. Because, see, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. We have answered the call as Christians, as believers, true believers, we've answered the call to follow him. But, see, he says, I don't want you just to follow me a little ways. I don't want you to stop in the journey. I want you to keep coming, keep walking with me, keep following me. Come and see. Father, I pray that you seal this word to our heart today. Father, I ask that you will touch everyone who hears this message with a deep desire to follow you in the true and living way by the Holy Spirit through the precious blood of Jesus. And Lord, we want to come to you. We want to see even more than we've ever seen. Show us great and mighty things, Lord. Show us the small little things that are so great and mighty to you. Hallelujah. And Lord, bless everyone who hears this, Lord. Save multitudes today throughout this earth, Lord, because you are worthy. And crush the serpent dragon down under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our email address, if you want to write, if you have prayer requests or you just want to say hello or give testimony, because it's good to communicate one with another. I'm telling you right now. The King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. The King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. Or uh, behold a new thing at yahoo.com. And the Lord bless you and keep you and make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God, the Lord Jesus, lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. And the Lord be gracious unto you today. His name, that's his authority, his character, and his dominion. His rule, his reign be in and upon your life. As you go forth conquering and to conquer in the mighty humility of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah.